is it just one one PC if it's a, just one PC I can use host if I'm talking about the whole network or one PC I can use IP address but if you use IP address then you have to use wildcard mask with that so if you're using if you're using an IP address of a computer the wildcard mask will be all zeros if you if you just want if you don't want to use wildcard mask you can use host instead of that so in this case I'm gonna use host what is my host address PC1 is 192.168.1.1 so 1.1 I am permitting TCP protocol from 192.168.1.1 to get access to where destination address your destination address is uh, 150.100.10.2 so here I say 150.100.10.2. Since I put an IP address, I have to use wildcard mask. I could have used the host here because I'm talking about just one server. So if I want to use wildcard mask, I have to use 0.0.0.0, .0 all zeros, because I'm talking about just one address. Okay. Next what is the port I'm talking about HTTP protocol as you saw here HTTP protocol uses port 80 and destination port should be port 80 not source port because your computer uses any port it will be an ephemeral port so any port can be chosen and it goes out but it goes out to the port 80 so the server on the other side waits for port 80 so here I have to say port 80 as you see here we have EQ means equal greater than less than not equal or range of ports in this case my port should be equal to again I need to resize equal to 80 so I'm telling in this access list permit TCP protocol from this host when it goes to this host on port 80 where the destination port is 80 press enter so I configured the first part of this scenario allow PC1 then I have to allow PC2 to get access to SMTP services on Google so let's go back oops we have configure and router one again I want to permit this time PC2 what type of protocol is that that I'm gonna permit SMTP SMTP is port 25 and it's TCP it's for mail services so I say again TCP from host 192.168.1.2 which is PC2 when it wants to go to 150.100.10. or here I can use host again host 150.100.10.3 this is my mail server where the port is 25 press enter and then the last part of our scenario says block all other PCs in the subnet including anything else from PC1 oh, sorry PC1 and PC2 PC2 here uh, so we go back here and I say deny deny what TCP UDP ICMP anything right so everything will be encapsulated in IP so when I want to block everything else, meaning TCP, UDP, ICMP, any any other protocol, I have to type IP because everything will be uh, encapsulated in IP packet and goes out. So I'm going to block IP. It doesn't matter what is it in. So deny IP from 
168.1.0 this time I'm talking about everyone in this network so when I talk about everyone in this network I have to put the network address and then wildcard mask I in with wildcard mask I say which part of the address is important as you see here 192 168 and 1 is important a match is required and the last part it changes it doesn't matter so I put 255 and then after that I say to get access to what according to our scenario block all other PCs in this subnet meaning they cannot go out even they cannot go out of this router they just they just can send something from for example here to here they cannot go out so when they cannot go out I have to say to any and I don't need to say what port because I'm talking in general about IP from this network when they want to get access to any now it is important to follow the order in this access list if you don't follow the order and for example you put this address by mistake on top before this permit then your access list will deny everything because as you know and as I've explained before in the concept of access list access list uh, your router goes through the access list uh, in order and sequence so first it goes through the first line if it could find the match then it stops at that point if it cannot find the match then it goes to the second line and then third line and then so on and so forth so you have to be very careful about the access list that you create and the order of the access list that you put in uh, the ACL the rules the order of rules in that ACL now I have to apply this access list to one interface so as I told you you have to apply this access list to the closest interface to the to the source so your source is here closest interface is this one which is fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 so we go to interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 and we type IP access group and the name of your access list E A C L and then we want to block the packets when they go in or out so for that purpose we go sit inside the router imagine that the router is so big or you are so small that you can go and sit inside this router when you're sitting inside this router and you're looking at this interface the packet that comes from PC1 in this direction it comes toward you and it comes into the router if you are here and sitting here then the and you're looking at this packet here you see that the packet comes inside the router so here I have to say IP access group use extended ACL when the packet goes in now my access list is configured if I go to the previous computer and I type the same command that I did previously meaning ping this address I press enter I will not be able to ping because my ping will be blocked so the only packet that I can send out of PC2 is SMTP packet and the only packet that I can send out of PC1 is HTTP packet so to test it I'm gonna use simulation mode of packet tracer from PC1 okay I keep this here from PC1 we want to go to we want to use HTTP to Google meaning this address address of PC1 is uh, let me say configure this adjust this in the, okay I think now it's better address of PC1 source address is 192.168.1.1 source port source port can be anything for example in this case I say 34,000 and for example I will say use the interval of 2 and then create the PDU and then auto capture or play so the packet starts from here that is HTTP request it goes to the router according to our access list it should be able to go out so it goes out as you see here
comes all the way here you see it sent it to both of the uh, the servers that is the concept of ARP ARP so the pr appropriate server responds back the packet comes all the way back get through the first router and then second router and it comes back to the switch and goes back to PC1 so as you see here our transmission was successful now the, the other thing that I want to try is SMTP so from PC2 I should be able to send SMTP uh, packets to uh, this server gmail.com so again click on PC2 the packet that I'm gonna send is SMTP destination address is Gmail I click on it the address comes here source address 192.168.1.2 that is PC2 source port can be anything for example 43000 I choose 43000 and I say predict of 2 create PDU and then play so from here the packet comes all the way to the switch to the router again SMTP should be able to get through our router as you see the packet went out uh, we had I think something here uh, it doesn't matter so the packet comes to the right server again ARP so this one will drop the packet the right server responds back so the packet this time worked came back all the way get through the router and comes back to PC2 so our packet was successful so my access list works properly here so you saw how I configure extended access list. So at this point, if, for example, this computer, PC4, tries to send a HTTP packet out to this server, he shouldn't be able to do that, and he will be blocked at this point. Let's try it and see if it works or not. From 192.168.1.3 on port 23000, for example, and again I use interval of 2, and I send the packet out so when my, pa my packet reaches this router at this point the router should drop the packet so uh, first you saw ARP that was ARP now here the router sends back its MAC address comes back here to this PC4 and then PC4 knows the MAC address now this is the packet that should go out and it reaches here and the router will drop the packet because that is an HTTP request and this PC is not allowed to get access to HTTP services outside its LAN as you saw the router dropped the packet the same thing is true for PC3 you see again another packet is going out and the same uh, will happen to this packet the router will drop the packet okay so that's how you configure extended access control list with this configuration we have uh, done whatever we wanted to configure we have achieved our goals we configured everything here so as you saw in extended access control list you have to configure it on the router closest to the source and apply it on the interface closest to the source that's how you configure extended access control list um, I hope today's video uh, was informative to you and helpful to you and uh, I would like to thank you for watching.